Boom. So you know what I woke up this morning to? Well, Jack. Seriously, three new matches all at once. And I looked at the time and it was around midnight. I was like, oh my God, it was lonely drunken bitch hour, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I've always said that Sunday is a good day for Tinder. Yeah, and so, it's Sunday and Saturday night. Yeah, and Sunday, well, later on in the day, because now they're sleeping or wiping the gum off their face. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it ain't pretty out, Jack. No, yeah, it ain't pretty out there. No, but I mean, I saw that and it was around 12, and I thought to myself, like, what if I still had to need to do that? Drive over at like midnight, be there at half past 12 and needing to podcast at 7 a.m. in the morning, not getting my sleep. Like, oh. Well, God. I do get not getting sleep ever and now and again, maybe ever so often. But to lose it, to just to be able to party or to uh, spend your money on beer, well, not, not even that. Just spend your, your time on that and your sleep. I mean, yeah. sleep? Who did I tell? Oh, I, I told Rob this. Like, Sleep is the number one priority next to eating. Like, There's two things you don't come between. That's me and my sleep and me and my food. Like, yeah. You don't. Don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> Bad idea, people. Especially the sleep. Remember what you and I talked about yesterday? Like, you want to get rid of bed at 8 p.m.? It's way too early. <laughs> Bitch, Honey, you say it's the Saturday night. I want to do what I want. Yeah, like, it, say that one more time and see how well you sleep the next time. <laughs> 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 well, apparently you're not sleeping here then. I. <laughs> oh, you told me those horrible stories. Like, don't you want to make love to me anymore? Yes, but not now. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that. Like the tendency of girlfriends to, well, want to get freaky when you're in the sack and you have to go up and uh, work early in the morning. And you're finally in bed by 11. And then the lady decides she wants to be filled. Ah, I, no, no, you wait. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool that you start to get frisky and all, but started at eight. Yeah. Started at seven. At yeah, least. even better. Yeah, even better. Started the earlier, the better. Like, uh, yeah. so no, it, I was love making. It will be all. <laughs> I was that thing Ron Swanson says. <clears throat> Vigorous love making. Yeah, um, as a, a, a thing about a perfect night or like a like his wedding night. Steak breakfast, food for dinner. Uh, and then he mentions a certain movie, and I can't remember which one. It's not, oh, yeah. it's not the River Bridge. It's another one. And no, vigorous no, no, love no. making and be in bed by eight. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, that's the one. Ron Swanson like should be. Whiskey. Yeah, Ron Swanson should really be like the the epitome of man in this sphere. Like, what is a man, Ron Swanson? Yeah, it should be like a like a mascot or something. Hey, why did you break it? It looked too perfect. It looked factory made. <laughs> no, that no, it was too perfect. It looked factory made. That's the one. I have a permit for that. This just says I can do whatever the hell I want. Exactly. <laughs> can we have corn on the cob at a barbecue? No. <laughs> Would you try some of our vegan bacon? Yes, I'd love to. Throws it out. Can I have another? Sure. Throws it out again. Can I have it's another? Is problem. something wrong? <laughs> Not at all. I'm just making sure nobody has to eat this crap. <laughs> That's brilliant. Can you imagine doing that like in the real world? Like, Would you like to try one of our tofu soy free whatever i don't even know what it's called anymore like i have been eating meat eggs bacon and cheese for so long i don't even know what other foods are called anymore what is this this round red shaped thing you eat it's, it's called not meat leave it alone 
<laughs> yeah, leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it's great. It's those little things. Well, yeah, it is the small things. Although Parks and Recreation overall isn't even that bad of a series. No, I really enjoyed it. It's um, it's it's filled with those little gems. Well, just like you said, it would be cool to do that in public or for real to, to with, with to other Ron. Like Remember other Ron? Oh yeah, yeah. I like Ron. Yeah, I, I like no longer like Ron. Yeah. <laughs> what are those on your feet? Well, they're my trusty the sandals. <laughs> <laughs> I believe feet should be free. I no longer like Ron. <laughs> I'm a firm believer of the fact that a man's feet should be encaged. <laughs> mm. No, but what I mean is overall that that series is not that much filled up with politics and ideology. I mean, maybe a bit with the strong independent women thing, but yeah, but it also makes kind of a joke out of it. And it's, it's funny that you say that because it's a show about politics or like a, like a political, political it's, organ. It's, it's mostly about women in politics, I guess. I mean, the blonde lady, I can't remember, Leslie, yeah, is her character's yeah. name Leslie. She keeps, effing it up like everything is going wrong wrong mm -hmm. i mean fight and it is a good representation of government institutions just like oh we have to work now nah, let's let's rather not like yeah let's not do it <laughs> which if you if you need to have a nine to five government job is like the golden ticket yeah be like wrong yeah be like wrong yeah be a libertarian in a government institution <laughs> Bacon Maldito, Bacon comments, a vegan plus vegan is winning no. Winning no. I don't even know what winning no is, but it sounds nice. Winning no. I'm never going to get to my podcast. What, you mean you're not going to be able to get drunk in the park, Bacon? I mean, come on, Bacon. <laughs> Should we invite Bacon? Let's invite Bacon. Let's, Let's invite Bacon. Nice. Bacon is awesome. Bacon is cool. He can always sit in the park drunk and do a live stream. Yeah, I've, I've heard Bacon before. Oh. He's a force oh. to be reckoned with. Yeah, he is. Hold on. I sent him the link to the Gendernomics audiobook instead of the live stream. Sorry, Bacon, but do buy the audiobook, please. Help yeah. out the channel. Put a lot of work into that. There was a guy a while back who, who told me, you should put out the book for free. I'm like, why? Oh, I put, yeah, I remember it. Like, what? Why? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, it's free on Patreon. I mean, okay, those are the trusty. Those are the trusty allies. Like yeah. the, the, the the second in commands are all there. Yeah. But you know, if you but, get with Patreon, you get a better deal. Yeah, sure. Oh, Cappy switched to subscribe star. I saw. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it's so much hassle. Where it's like, oh. No, but in when, terms of a book for free, I mean, come on, it took you time to do it, right? What yeah, do we know about I time mean, and money? the book is about 15 hours long, so that's recorded material that's edited. And then you have mm -hmm. to look at the what is edited out and the cursing and the oh my god, there was <laughs> so much in it. Oh. That's a big pile of work. Mm. But he also wanted me to show a receipt of me donating to money the money to a men's charity, and I'm like, you do know that men's charities are overrun with militant feminists right so the Any money charity and every charity is like except for mine like patreon is run by me <laughs> and would you consider a charity i mean it's, what? it's giving back to you but it's not yeah really but charity. what what would you consider charity and what i mean by that is when you're not thinking about the the money grubbing organizations, but let's let's leave yeah. those out of the picture. What would you consider a genuine charity? Well, I think you got me there because charity is synonymous with a money grabbing organization, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, to deserve the title charity, you have to have certain uh, allies or emblems and logos on your poster. You know how that works. The UN. Yeah, Unilever or whatever. Oh yeah, that one too. That's more corporatism, right? 
things yeah, like that. Yeah, but they they like to stand behind people who have nothing to eat and the people who promise to give them some money. And uh, yeah, cat, you know how that works. Cat. cat oh yeah, the cat. Yes. You the already said it. Right? Spying on me because it needs some food. Hmm? Oh, it needs food. Go give it food. Mm. We're okay. I can handle this for a moment. It usually gets its food around eight, so I'm trying um. to uh, keep to that. <laughs> sure. yeah, but you're already awake. Feed me. Yeah, because it's time I... for me to close the door. One sec. Yeah. Like, I don't know how to look at a clock. <laughs> Cats are pointless. <laughs> Female complaining, closed door. Problem solved. <laughs> that easy. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, but what, what I was thinking about, like a true act of generosity doesn't have to include money. It can include time. Yeah, that's you know what true. I'm saying? So if I would describe a genuine charity, it would be more like, what have you done? What have you participated in? that forwards the needs of the the poor so to say the the less capable whatever yeah i would say um a good form of charity is a um well what what we have at work there's uh, certain guitars that get um, left there and we simply put them up in the music school so oh. if there's uh, somebody who needs uh, a good deal on the guitar, and it's just absolute bargain. Absolute so you steam. just so you just use them as props, actually. Like, hey, you want to have guitar lessons, but you don't have money for a guitar, you can use ours. Yeah, and it's like a special deal for them because they don't hang in the store, so they are especially for them, and that's just like a bargain bin, lowest of the lowest deal. And I'm talking like maybe twenty euros for a guitar. Yeah. Well, that's not a bad deal, actually. Yeah, because you I have mean, a, so, yeah. You have a lot of kids who actually want to play guitar but don't have money for a guitar because parents need an SUV and a McMansion and things like that. Yeah, and well, let's be honest. Guitars can get really expensive, and kids have a lot of hobbies these days. Mm -hmm. and they all really? want to have a guitar. Do they have lots of hobbies, though? Well, they're easily distracted, I should say. Um, they all want one... Um, Let's say they want a, a drum kit one day and they want a guitar the next. You're not going to shell out a couple of hundred euros for a new guitar just because your child wants one and ends up behind the iPad when he has to practice guitar. But isn't that just parenting in general? Yeah, but it's also easy for kids to get distracted. So it's good that the child uh, has the opportunity to, well, come into contact with different things. So he can pick something up, drop some other, and find his way to vocation. Mm, I still and think, I still think that, is guiding. Yeah, I still think that a huge factor in that is mostly parenting. And yeah, you and I, for not giving them an iPad. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, you and I talked about this before. Like, yeah. uh, a child is turning one. Like, it's his first birthday <laughs> and family and everybody else shows up with gifts and things like that i'm like the yeah. child does not have the cognitive uh, abilities to even notice these things it's like forms and colors for it why would you spend so much just to yeah. give a gift like what you and i talked about yesterday like with uh with my birthday things like yeah, that i was about to say that yeah like, it's, do you it's, have it's an air fryer? Like, do I want one? <laughs> it's people, they, they, they want to come up with something. Oh, well, yeah, let's, but, let, let, let's not show up empty-handed. No, okay, but here it comes. Here's my problem with that. It is not for you. No, exactly. It's, it's for it's the same them. Christmas, for that matter. Yeah, yeah I, at, at Christmas, I, I value time with others more than gifts. Like maybe some stupid socks, okay? I'd be, uh, yeah, that but, would be but funny, but that's the whole thing. People who show up at Christmas with gifts, those are the prime examples of the we cannot um, ignore the urge we have. The the whole um, birthday present problem. Yeah, but those are the people. 
the biggest gripe I have with that is the whole when you tell them no, just give me money or give me nothing. I'd appreciate you just being here. No, but we want to buy you a gift. Stop buying me crap. Yeah. Gonna throw it out anyway. But no, it's this it's this misplaced virtue. Like, look at me giving you something. You're not giving it for me. You're giving it for you, and I'm seeing through it. Jack, you know what the problem is? That I, I told expect you this people yesterday to understand. Yeah, yeah. You, people around you, they think that you are part of the same illusion. No, 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 no. You're missing the point. It's not about that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying what is, that? is that they're not even thinking about you. It's not about you. It's not about the birthday. Yeah, it's but about... the, the fact that they think you are strange because you don't have the urge to get presents on your birthday or kind to of... get presents. No, 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 not even that. Not even that. It is for them an opportunity to virtue signal. Yeah. That's my, that's my whole gripe with it. Like it has gotten that far when, I mean, normally we see virtue signaling in companies and things like that, but even with people amongst each other, it's like that. Look, people look at amongst me. each other know that, but they, they give themselves that uh, little, uh, how do you call that? Little moment to virtue signal. They expect it of one, one another. So you are the one breaking that expectation from the common people from most people around you. No, but the, the, it's it's not even about me. It, it, no, but that's don't what look I'm at saying. Me. Don't get me wrong. But no, it's it's not you. But the it's me as me as well. But the the thing is that we notice. Mm hmm. And that's I, that's the whole thing. Uh, and that's what annoys me with all of this. Like they're living vicariously through you. To be virtuous like look at me what i got him like yeah but did you get it for him or did you get it to showcase it off to everybody yeah <laughs> and that's that's the same thing with charity these days like look at me what i donated like okay so it's always has been uh, with charity well that's the debate right does altruism really exist or does altruism always have uh, an external or ulterior motives? Hmm. Like, does altruism always have ulterior motives? Which I found a very interesting question. Very That's interesting. Cool. That in every good deed, there is something in it for them. And it's, it's kind of nihilistic thinking, but when you get down to the absolute core of the issue you might want to consider it and that's what yeah. i that's what i meant with what is actual charity like when you perform an action there's not much into it for you because you're losing time you're not necessarily losing money although you could be using the time to earn money but the free giving up of one's time to benefit another could be considered true altruism yeah, that's true. But I think you are looking at it different. Um, people always want something and they want to show and they want to virtue signal. Why do they do that? Why do people uh, hold value to being able to virtue signal, to show something off to the group? Why is that? To compare themselves to others. Because they want to be part of that group. They want to be part of a group. I guess. We are herd so, animals. Yeah, so the importance of bringing a Christmas gift or a birthday gift is to virtue signal, correct, mm -hmm. to other people. Like, look at me being a good uh, member of a certain group or look at me being capable of being in your group. It's it's that kind of thing. It's, it's a safety for themselves. Mm -hmm. And... It's just weird whenever people are not acknowledging that and just say, oh, well, just show up with nothing or give me some money or whatever. Yeah. It's, and It doesn't and, fit the scheme. Now, Bacon brings up a good point. What's wrong with gifts? Or Bowl of Chaos gave me a 
booze fridge that were that's worth two hundred bucks. Okay, mm -hmm. gifts are fun. Well, yeah. did you actually need it? And my beginning point of this whole essay, sort of say verbal essay, I don't know what you want to call it, is in my experience, people have asked me like, what do you want? And I'm like, just give me money or whatever. Don't buy me gifts that you think I need. That's the biggest one. Like what they think you need. <laughs> but it's like, no, if you really want to get me something, listen. And then they don't. And then it's like, oh, but I bought you this. Look at me being good. No, you're a dick. You're a moron. And it sounds, maybe it sounds entitled, but it also, it also um, locks in with the whole, the birthday of a one-year-old. Like, what? <sighs> Again, the whole vicariously living through somebody to show off how virtuous you are. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're not paying attention to the person who you're buying it for you're just yeah, buying it true. for you you're, they're buying it for themselves to give know what i'm saying yeah yeah definitely and that's that's the kind of like the the fun thing because like since forever i could not uh find anything for my birthday i mean ever since i was not a child anymore and was either like Le uh, lego or uh connects after that, I never had an idea for a birthday gift. Mm. So every birthday just turned into the virtue signal shit show of parade of validation mm. for the other people. And it's 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 kind of funny in that way. Oh, look at them. Look at what they brought. Oh, and they're, they're more showing it off to one another than they're showing it off to you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I, there's the whole value of the birthday just driven, in, driven into the ground. Oh yeah, absolutely. And oh, it keeps reminding me of that phrase in Batman Begins, Which where uh, where Rachel Gould shows up and uh, Christian Bale to get everybody out of his house, and he's like, "All right, everybody, thank you for drinking my booze, eating my oh, food, yeah. and being the we mask wearing vultures you truly are, and showing your true face. This is not a joke, people. Leave." Which is an outstanding move. And well. It, it is a great movie, but especially that part. And how I realized that is that it does come down to that, that it's mostly vicariously social occasions. And I'm not yeah. saying like distance yourself from everybody, but when I removed my birthday from my Facebook, when I still had one, there were only like three people who, who <laughs> even knew. And I'm like, oh, so that's what, it, this is what happens. Like, yeah. oh. <laughs> And it's funny how it, that works. Yeah, it, it kind of is. And you have people with thousands of Facebook friends and actually feel special. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> you must have a horrible life, don't you? Like, look, no, my be that level of validation, there's something look, wrong. Look, my digital friends wished me a happy birthday. Like, mm, yeah. And... Okay, like, okay, Rob is a friend of mine, TJ, the, the masculine geek, even Clary. They live in a different country. When I say thousands of Facebook friends, these are actually people who live, like, within the hour of driving distance, which makes it even more sad. <laughs> like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird, though. But, I mean, we're still lucky. We're in Europe, so everybody is close by. You can practically walk anywhere. Oh yeah, that's true. Like um, our our curly friend, mm -hmm. he walked. Did he walk to Italy? He almost walked to Italy. He went through. It was Greece, right? He was on his way to Greece, I believe. Was he on his way to Greece? Yeah. Yeah, but he he managed to get to Poland, <laughs> and then they had to turn back for some reason. Oh well, still. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do in Europe just by walking. Yeah, it's the same with the States. I mean, we if you want, you can go all the way to China. Just depends on the money and the time you got. Yeah, pretty much. Like if you have a tent, you can get a you can get far, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, well, after the trip to uh, New Zealand I did, I was thinking about going to America for the Pacific Crest Trail. 
It's another one of those uh, long distance trails. And it's fun to do it like that, but you could make your own way. And from Europe, you have a lot more land to, well, Explore. come up with. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's going to be some terrain that's going to be too hard to walk through, but. Mm -hmm. Which is funny you should mention that, by the way, since, well, you can do it with the states as well, like go reconnaissance, things like that. Mm -hmm. I mentioned it to someone else a while back. Like the states is now polarized as hell, and you have to imagine like the states isn't that old. It's like yeah. two fifty, maybe three hundred years, maybe yeah. a bit. Of, yeah. uh, Seven, no seventy seventy six. So that, that that's almost uh, that's almost three hundred, almost three hundred. But. If you look at Europe's history, we have been at each other's throats for like ages. Like Napoleon is mm -hmm. like when was Napoleon defeated? Let's look that we'll up. Just just whip out a, a map of Europe and see all the different borders. When was Waterloo? That was 1815. That's just over 200 years ago. We were still at each other's throats. And yep. that's almost as long ago as that United States is old, which is pretty much fun because the United States hasn't been through that yet. It hasn't been through, like, the Netherlands had an 80 year long war with Spain. 80. Yeah, well, the origin of the states, I mean, there's a lot of bloodshed in their history. And there's a lot of war for, uh, before all the the borders were drawn. There's yeah, but no, you see a lot of straight drawn, straight drawn uh, borders yeah. in America, but not as much as the Europeans. It's like I think no, it's, this... it's off and on with the Europeans and all the I... countries that used to be together and then fell apart and then a war amongst them other. I think the states are still in its adolescence when it comes to that. Like, it still needs to have some, uh, it still needs to get something out of its system. No, I think just too many people being plugged into the internet and all forming opinions. Maybe. It's, but It's like a toddler with crayons, really. A and toddler with crayons. Yeah, and the writing on the wall is eventually taken serious by the going buyers. That that's all that Facebook and all that social media bullshit is. Yeah, but and it, the media in there. It is interesting that you that you can correlate these two with each other because history never repeats itself, but it if does rhyme. But it does rhyme. And the thing with history, it doesn't repeat itself whenever you learn from it. And if there's still a lesson to be learned, it will repeat itself. That's a given. Mm -hmm. well, again, it, again, it always rhymes. It always rhymes. And even though I have stated before that when Trump gets out of office in 2024, because yes, he will win 2020. I mean, like Kanye just announced he is going to be a presidential elect. <laughs> I mean, people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I wish I was kidding. I, I really. Oh, this wish. is great. I wish I was kidding. Just when you thought it couldn't get any closer to idiocracy, it just gets closer to idiocracy. I wish I was kidding, Watson. I really was. Uh, let's. Uh, what's the only? This is the only website I trust anymore. The Daily Wire. They're biased as hell, but <laughs> who cares? Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this, look at this, look at this. We're gonna get banned of YouTube people, so hit that like button, please share, because uh, I'm gonna share the Daily Wire. Look. <laughs> I'm not even right. Yeah, great again. Twisting, uh, yep. <laughs> Elon Musk, you have my full support. <laughs> what? I'm not even kidding. I mean, this, I mean, as a European, I look at the States and think like, you go, kid, you go. Yeah, but it, with with stuff like this, it just turns into this weird reality show. 
I mean, it, it's it's too far away to really give a fuck, and that's what people always have, and that's why charity doesn't work to get back to that. Mm-hmm. But if you are in the states and you see this, I could imagine being completely pissed off with the recent developments in in general, just the course the country takes and the 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 fightingness between the people. It's. <sighs> It's mind-bogglingly stupid from a distance, but the same thing happens here. I mean, it's slow increments, and most of the things are happening in Britain and all the other countries that really don't really, uh, how do you say that politely, have their shit together. Mm. Well, just like this news article I uh, found the other day in uh, England, they're not going to refer to the biggest bedroom in the house as a master bedroom because it's sexist and it's racist. I want to look that one up if you don't mind. I know it's a bit of outrage, but I am wondering. This is more of the laughter at humanity show. No worries, I'm not stealing it from you. Master bedroom. It's the first thing that comes up. Oh my God. It's just crazy. No, it. I mean, come on, people. Um, oh yeah, yeah but a it's state, such a non-issue. No, here it is. Yeah, it is a non-issue, but I mean, people, people, and okay, you have to look at this uh, as what it is. Yes, yes, yes. Here, estate agents are banning term "master bedroom" in wake of Black Lives Matter movement, which is a communist movement. But okay. Uh, are coming up with a new term to describe homes as several terms like master bedroom, which is absolutely stupid because the amount of white slaves the Middle East had is atrocious as well. So this has nothing to do with just a certain skin color, like slaves. I mean, never mind. Well, I have it easier than that. I mean, who sleeps in the master bedroom? The master of the household. Yeah, just that- fill that definition however you like. It's not It's not your sex. It's not your race. It's just you being capable and being the master of the house. Who paid for that motherfucker? I would have accepted patriarchy more than the Black Lives Matter movement. Seriously. If they were like, well, it, um, it refers to the master of the household, which was always a man, so it's patriarchal. <laughs> that you I know, could have understood, Stan. I wouldn't have agreed with, with it. The thing with BLM is... You, those guys have stages enough. You don't need to give them another one. Mm. It's just no. complaining. And, and no, no, no. But you have to look at this like it is. Because, and I don't feel like going through the whole article right now, but you have to look at it. Is it nationwide real estate agents or is it just one real estate agent? Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. Because it's, it is here in Europe and overseas, Lil. But the the scale it is at now it's it's incremental it's it's very small because i don't think that nationwide they're gonna do that no and if it was a nationwide there would be a more uproar and we would see that in the press as well i don't even know if there would be an uproar anymore you know, I even mean, a small one if it's if it's something that's true and considering all the um, all the people there would yeah. always be an uproar. You, you know to which point I got right now? Well, they can just have it. They can really just have it. Like you want to you want to change language, go ahead. Like you want to you want to have all these rules and hurdles men have to jump through and uh straight white men have to jump through so you can virtue signal, you can have it. Because I've seen the opposite articles as well, where they're like, oh, heterosexual white males are not performing well anymore. And I'm like, because most of us don't want to anymore. And there is a wide margin that just stopped yep. caring about your ass. Remember the article of your shit, Karen? No, but remember the article you showed me about the girl who was worried about her student? <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, this is a brilliant example. This is a brilliant. Is. That girl was twenty nine thousand euros in debt. 
And she got asked, do you worry about it? Yes, I do worry about it, especially since I want to do a master's in journalism after this. I'm like, honey, <laughs> keep digging. Keep digging. Yeah, because, because it also know, illustrates there's no hope for these people. But, oh, and there you hit the nail on the head. Us versus them, Watson, us versus them. There is no hope for those people because they live in that bubble. They live in that bubble of virtue signaling and um, increasing student debts and wanting a bailout, which they probably will get somewhere. I hope I'm dead by then. <laughs> and if I'm not, I'm, gonna, I'm going to blow all my money on coke and hookers. But <laughs> well, and then I'll die. Almost... <laughs> but, That's no, a way to go, Jack. Yeah, sure. Hold on, let me finish the point. It's they are so trapped in their self made prison. And I know what's going to happen in five years. That girl who's going to finish journalism is going to write an article like, uh, Strong independent women can't fight men anymore who are economically attractive. Honey, you know why? Because the economically attractive men, like me and Watson, who got our shit together, we're not there yet, but still, who could have the finances to bill you out in one turn are done with your shit. We told you how to prevent this. We told you not to do it, yet you went on with it anyway. And now you're like, oh, I hit my toe. I need a band-aid. No, you're not going to get it. You know what that's called? Responsibility. And men like me, men like Watson, men like everybody else in this sphere are tired of your fucking bullshit. And we're not gonna do it not because we don't like you absolutely not i i, I love them hmm. but we warned you we told you and yeah. we we took the high road and now you can sit you can um you can lie in the bed you made but you're gonna lie in it alone that's for sure well, they probably find somebody to drag down with them. But and, how and long know, can you be on your way or on a journey or on the road without having a clear visual of your final destiny? I mean, you're why is this lady studying her fucking ass off to get a, um, what was it again? Uh, uh, journalism she degree. Yeah, you know, she was for, she was majoring in English for her bachelor, and then she was going to do journalism as a master. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, is that worth sixty or what was sixty nine thousand euros? No, no, no. To she have was, that skill. She was twenty nine thousand in debt already. Mm -hmm. She had one more year to go, so it's going to be passing thirty. Okay, let's say she, eighty, whatever. She was probably living in dorms paid for by student loans and then she's going to do a master's in journalism so i mean that's going to be i wouldn't say 80 but it's going to be a lot because a master's after you've done your bachelor's only takes about a year maybe two yeah. and after she's done with that study she wants to take out a mortgage to to pay for a house of that same uh, amount of money or even oh, higher, yeah. probably. Oh, yeah, so now I remember. That to it. Now I remember. That was her biggest concern. She yeah. said, oh, I'm going to get in trouble when I take out a mortgage. Honey, you do know yeah. what a mortgage is, right? It's a, a fucking loan. loan. A loan. <laughs> At one but, point in time, I'm wondering if these people just get used to be punching up all their way. Of, yeah, but so what's they the, just you know, keep it. You know what the biggest problem is? We're the ones at fault here because we're expecting a cat to bark. <laughs> we're expecting this a cat true. to bark. We're expecting to. We're expecting children to make rational decisions, and what I mean by that is that most people, especially in the education system, are being kept down, are being kept in their adolescent stage of life. They're, ne they're not being taught anything about money. They're not taught anything about liabilities, about assets. Seriously, rich dad, poor dad. And then when I do like this, I can look at it. A very simple book, 200 pages. You can read it in a day. All those concepts are very easily to teach, very easy to teach. Yet they're not being taught in school. Why? 
The only possible motivation I could think of is because they don't want you to know. Well, Jack, if a sheep is safe and it knows its way, does it need a um, what do you call them? Shepherd. Again? Shepherd. Yeah. Well, sheep who know the way don't need a shepherd, and when they yeah. don't need a shepherd, the shepherd is out of job. Mm-hmm. Teachers. <laughs> yeah. Well, not just teachers, but in a literal sense, yeah, you could say teachers. No. Which is I mean, everything. And that's why I love being an autodidact. And for all the for all the negative things, there are a lot of good things that the whole internet has brought because self publishing is now a thing. Although Rich Dad Poor Dad wasn't necessarily self published, but remember that story in that book about the um, about the journalist who asked Robert Kiyosaki, like, "I'm a journalist major, and why haven't I published a book?" Absolutely. And then he. And then uh, he just shoves the book in her face. He's like, best-selling author, not writer. Mm -hmm. like, not journalist. Like, I never went to book writing school, honey. I never had an author's degree. I just started writing. And that's all there is to it. Yeah, you, well, you need to start doing things. I mean, I Yeah, you need to fuck up a couple of times so you know you're heading in the right direction and eventually hit the nail on the head. I mean, I never went to podcasting school, and I have 14 viewers right now. I mean, 14 is not much, but it's 14 more people than the guy who went to podcasting school and never started a podcast. Like, like the girl I showed you yesterday, entrepreneur school. What? <laughs> you know what? Is entrepreneur? What is entrepreneur school? What is that? <laughs> That's, it's gold. That's what it is. I mean, it's a money machine. I mean, you know, the better question is why haven't you and I started something like that yet? I'll ask. That's Tate. the real question. I mean, <laughs> Tate started Hustlers Academy or whatever. I mean, I don't know what he's up to this time. But... Well, he started something again. Again. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Why is he successful? I don't know. He starts with whatever. I mean that's the that's the best thing to do sometimes, right? Yeah, I mean, what's all there is to it? Take good shit and think. Well, that's a good idea. Start doing. Yeah. It. Oh man, people. Hey, by the way, you want to uh, record the coffee cast right away after this? Uh, online or at your place? At my place. Yeah, sure. Okay, because then we're gonna wrap this one up. 15 viewers, please, please, people, hit that like button. It really helps the channel out. And uh, what? Likes are charity. That's a good one. Likes are charity. Yes, yes. Be a good person. You can buy Truth the Mug on redbubble.com. The show is sponsored by the Gendernomics Audiobook. And if you want to get access to the coffee cast that Watson and I will be recording in about, what, 15 minutes? Yeah, you sure. Can you can go to patreon.com forward slash Jack Make Your Nose. There will also be other exclusive content like the first Genomics audiobook, the Book of Pook audiobook, which is almost finished. There is a chapter every week. Uh, old Red Pill Reads videos and weekly Q&As plus video requests. You can get access to that starting at $1 a month. And since it is early in the month, you can get free access for one month, actually. That's the thing with Patreon. If you like, if you become a Patreon at the beginning of the month and you didn't like the content, you just cancel your subscription at like the 29th and you don't have to pay. So, hmm. awesome. people, if you want to have a, uh, a preview, do it at the beginning of the month. If you didn't like it, cancel your subscription. It's as easy as that. And if you did like it, thank you. So uh, we're going to wrap this one up. Again, hit the like button, and we will see you next week. Take us out. Toodles.